I just wanted to give you a little bit of a taste of what healing in, in our gardens is about. Um, first of all, I just want to say a huge thank you to Hannah Grant um, for her amazing best wing, wing woman ever, um, for her incredible support and help in bringing today to life. Um, to Mel Riku, who's also helped us, to Dave who yes, from the Men's Sheds Network, who stayed behind yesterday and helped us set up, to Sue Jack from our team as well. Uh, and, more, and more importantly, and I say this with respect, to every community group, every nursery, every organisation who has reached out to us or who has been open to helping our, you, our storm impacted residents. This program is free. Everything in this program is free for you. If you're not ready for this program and you've still got private property cleanup, that's where we can connect you to Habitat for Humanity. We'll see if we can pull together some other volunteers, which I know some of the work Dave's doing as well, um, to be able to do that. So we understand also that recovery is community-led. This is not doing things in place or trying to say to you, this is what you need. That is not how, it's not how I roll, it's not how we roll. The idea and the intent of this program is that we work in partnership. And what we're doing is hopefully lifting the burden of coordinating all of these events and getting all of these partners on board and doing all of that for you so that you can just be in the space to receive or to perhaps share, share some knowledge or skills that you're, you might be able to do or help a neighbour plant um, and to actually get out in the environment as well. So there are three parts to the program. My Garden Sanctuary. Oh, this is an exciting part. <laughs> this is where we've, we'll be providing um, uh, a whole range of support for you. So everything from free workshops on how to propagate, how to heal damaged plants. If your garden's gone totally, how to start from scratch. Kind of like Landscaping 101, but you don't need $100,000 to do it. Um, so there'll be private, uh, private garden tours. So if you want to see how some other residents who are willing and able to take you through their property to see what they've been doing. Learning how to deal with different environments. So many of us were in shade and we're now in sun because the canopy around us has changed. So how do we actually work with the existing gardens that we've got? We've got also free garden visits where we can come to you and just share with you some advice. Maybe it's, about, maybe it's something about drainage. Or, or, you know, or like landscape, or, you know, or the water's just running off your property and you don't know what to do. Maybe you want to create a food garden and you don't know if you've got enough sun. We can come out, um, so we can come out and, and see you to do that. So if you're interested in a garden visit, it's not going to cost you anything. We'll bring one or two of our team. I will be coming with you because everything we're doing is what I call trauma-informed. And that means that we understand as much as we possibly can, while well, we come and walk in your shoes, we understand that what in some ways what you've been through. And so we will be doing this kindly and gently and supporting you as much as you need or as little as you need. So please book a garden visit if you're interested. I can see one person over there saying, yes, we have a garden visit. It's going to be great. So we're going to bring our gardens wildlife team, horticulturalists, We'll even running programs with our septic team. Septic's not exciting until it doesn't work. <laughs> okay? Then it becomes pretty exciting. So maybe you know things have changed and you're thinking, oh, okay, what do I do now? So there's a lot happening in that space. Lending a hand is where if you are willing and able to have sh to share your knowledge or skills or time to actually help another neighbour in the garden or join Habitat for Humanity, even for a day. You don't have to join forever, it might just be one day you can give. Uh, and help um, other residents with private property clean up. Maybe you're a really good horticulturalist and you're actually really good at propagation. Come and see me, please. <laughs> Maybe we can actually talk about that. We are here to support community groups as well um, and our wonderful community partners. We have 30 community partners already. You'll see their names on the back wall there. You'll also see the list of programs that we have and free events for September. September's a little bit lighter because it's done football. It kind of got in the way of a number of weekends and availability. But October, we are rocking. So check out the, um, the calendar of events. They're all free. Registrations will be open early next week. Because you are registered, you will be notified first of them and you can just register for any of those programs. So, oh, okay. Well, this, this is what we call going free. You're going free, free form. It's got the power of connecting.
It's because it's, is it plugged in? Okay. Yeah, what? Okay. I'm just going to. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, so that's that's what happens. <laughs> that's what happens. Um, the, the last part of our program is called Beyond Your Fence, Beyond My Fence, and that's where I don't know about you, but for me, I've lived in Aki, and I've only been Aki 14 years. So I'm not even a local yet, I understand that. <laughs> um, I thought it was seven years until I hit 10 and someone said, no, it's 30, and I went, oh, okay. Sorry. Don't worry about it. My son needs to come again. Um, and, and part of that was, uh, my garden became my sanctuary. And now that's changed a little. And my garden might be okay, but the landscape around me has changed. And that can hurt. And so part of Build My Feds is actually helping us to reconnect, to actually love again and watch our environment heal, see how we can support that, connecting with our amazing friends on groups, our amazing land care groups, and also some great programs in terms of wellness. Um, so being in the country, we're even doing yoga in the forest. So that's going to be so cool. It's going to need to be flat land, but we're going to get it happy. <laughs> we are also um, connecting, to running a number of events with Hunkamara and Dindi, Ash Darwin, and some of amazing uh, elders and leaders within the Wurundjeri community. So um, connection to country is so important. I remember sitting down on the ground two weeks after the storm and just putting my hand on the, on the land and crying. Yeah. I just felt like I felt her pain, sorry. If I've forgotten anything really important, come and see me afterwards, I'll fill you in. We have um, the Tesla tickets, we have the plant vouchers, and some other amazing, amazing things. Sea salt, we've even got some free sea salt. And we've also got some propagating. Oh, yeah, we've got a hand pipe as well. But we've also, we've got, we're getting 300 bags of propagating mix. So we're running a program called Flora for a Friend, where we can actually, if you're really good at propagating, we can just give you that so you can start. We're asking you to keep your pots. We're not, recycling is really important here. Um, but we're also running short, small sessions. Everything comes with a cup of tea and a cake. <laughs> and apparently if you cut it in half, the calories go. <laughs> so um, all the calories, <laughs> yeah, exactly. All I'll leave all the cake will be right. So um, with that, uh, with that uh, flora for a friend, the idea is that we, if you can, you want, if you've got plants in your garden that you want to duplicate or damage, to actually propagate them and also maybe propagate one for a friend. And what we want to do is just create some very small welcoming events for community, just for community, not for council, for community. So to welcome back residents as they come home. Mm -hmm. And to actually welcome them in, in a way that works for you. We've got our youth brigade, from that dating on here, amazing, who are actually really going to get involved in some of the propagating workshops. And so our residents who are coming back home can actually select from any of those free plants that you've created. So it's plants from you to them, which I think is a pretty powerful program. I'm going to hand it over to Philip now. Um, Philip Johnson is the incredible landscape designer. Some of you, have you heard what he's doing here? Yes. In the gardens? Okay. I'll let Philip tell you all about it. This is a uh, quite an overwhelming moment to be speaking here. Uh, I've lived on the mountain for 23 years. Um, I love this place. This is truly amazing. Uh, and what this initiative of connecting people for this healing process with gardens and nature and plants. Oh, you, 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 I, we were talking about it yesterday. We were all crying. <laughs> um, what I'm about to show you, um, and I want to take you on a journey of my professional career, I want to show you inspiration that you might get, okay, I'm going to put a little dish of water to, for birds, or bees, or bush bees, uh, or a little fire pit. We know how important the fire pit in Kalorama was. Uh, I don't want you to think, oh God, I've got to build this whopping great thing. No, I'm sharing my journey, what I love, but most of all, it's the connection with nature and the environment. I can't stress that enough. And I'll tell you some random stories about the Queen and all these random stories as well. Uh, 
I'm about to show you something. This is the first time I've actually shared this publicly. Uh, and I would actually really appreciate no one records it because it actually hasn't gone anywhere. Um, so this is a really sneak peek of uh, what we've been putting together uh, of this project up in Olinda. And hopefully this will work. Um, after Chelsea, I got back to home. Uh, and for about six months, I basically received no phone calls. This wonderful thing in our Australian culture of tall poppy syndrome, really bad trait. Uh, I had to restructure my business. I took Chelsea off my website. I didn't even talk about it but I communicated about how disappointing that was. Uh, my little healing process to get through that, because that was pretty draining on my mental health. And I caught up with a group of friends and we uh, paddled down the Franklin River. Um, and being immersed in beauty, drinking the Franklin River every day, it was an amazing thing. And that was my little way of connecting with nature and filling my bucket up again. Uh, from a young age, I've really struggled at school. Um, yes, I'm dyslexic, I've probably got ADHD, and I've probably got a few other things too. Uh, but ha that's the way my brain works. Uh, but at school, I really couldn't even read and write. Uh, even right to year 12, I really struggled. I had to get my dad to help me with so many things. And I just persisted. And the thing that I became really good at was rock climbing. That taught me to believe in myself and not ever give up. I'm going to share a few things. The Franklin River. Uh, uh, waterfall, cool. I love waterfalls. I did a waterfall tour too, and I'll talk about that in a second. Uh, that waterfall tour I was talking about uh, 20 years ago, I had a really challenging other time in my life. Uh, and I separated, and then the next day, I put my energy into building my healing garden. I called it the healing pond uh, here at Olinda. So that's my house before and that's one year later. Uh, this is all, we talked about stormwater. No, oh, I love stormwater, I tell you that. Hey, this is my ideas I've got with council. Stormwater, uh, I spoke to a thousand landscape architects a few years ago in London and I started with this picture and I said, I love drains! I absolutely love drains because look at what you can do with a drain. You can create a waterway, you can create a habitat, you can create an ecosystem, it can come alive, it can heal the soul. It can connect us with nature. Um, it can even be a wonderful ground for uh, frogs. Seven different species of frogs in my billabongs. It's also linked to a fire system. Uh, and it has these amazing views looking out to the valley. The spirit, the soul of the landscape, it can heal us. Uh, then I had too much water still. So, ooh, I've got another idea. Let's create a natural pool. So a natural chemical-free swimming pool. I'm going to be putting a bit of pressure on council about this. I've got an idea. Uh, uh, my waterfalls. And this was all the inspiration for what I did over in London 10 years ago and what we are doing right now. Uh, uh, amazing chemical-free swimming pool. It runs on 20, uh, 200 watts of energy and running off water collected off the site. It's designed to fluctuate like in nature, like a billabong. It can dry right up if we don't get the rains, but then the rains return, this billabong comes back to life. This is my favourite friend. I'm sure we've seen them. They're my little, little robins. Uh, I call them Easter eggs on legs. <laughs> um, and then I, I spoke about fire systems. So my place, when I, um, I've now set it up since Black Saturday to be activated through temperature sensors. So I, I don't need to be on the property to activate it. I'm off the mountain and the, the system comes alive uh, through temperature. And the same thing we're doing down the road. Our garden, our asset, we had an amazing couple donate $250,000 to this project to make it happen. And they said, we just need to protect it from fire. And so we've got an automated fire system uh, in our garden down below. Um, now I'm going to take you on a range of other projects. This is called Banksia Bend. It used to be Lubra Bend in, uh, in uh, the Yarra, Yarra Valley. Uh, and we created these amazing billabongs. Uh, once again, fluctuate seasonally, working with your indigenous plants, your local plants to the local area. That's what cleans your water. That's what um, creates that beautiful environment. Yes, the client has put a lotus in. You always got to work and massage those relationships. But to Chelsea, the stepping stones connecting people back to nature, um, this myriad of feeling here, 
um, it's an indigenous water plant. Uh, and I, I, I found a similar type over in London and it took me like close to two days to plant an effect like this between our stepping stones. And I use chopsticks. Uh, look at these awesome pieces of rocks. So these rocks are normally crushed from Listerfield to make crush rock, to road base. And we found this piece of stone and we made this wonderful uh, roundabout rock. Uh, a little get time in the year of summer solstice, there's a gap in this cypress hedge and the sun just comes through and hits this one rock and everything else is dark in the garden. So it's really quite a fluke I did there. Uh, uh, Eucalyptus yararensis, endangered. In my garden down here, we have over 80 different species of plants that are threatened and endangered. We've had donated 22 3.5 metre high Woolamai pines for the garden down here, from the Botanic Gardens in New South Wales, with the tags from the known sites, the four known sites. So that gives me horticulture, like it's the goosebumps. <laughs> I can't, can't believe it. Uh, this lady was amazing to work with, very visionary to inspire sustainable practices for the future. Uh, this piece of stone collects water naturally. So it's a natural bird bath. And looking out to, we know those views. Uh, and then this was once a tennis court, stormwater management. So we've t removed the tennis court, left a tennis court pole uh, and built this wonderful wetland. Then we've developed a habitat corridor down to the Yarra River and she's planted probably close to 30,000 indigenous uh, plants along her billabongs as well. Uh, our garden down below is off the grid on power. We said to PV, Parks Vic, no, we don't need power. We will power on the side. If the waterfalls aren't working that day because we've just, it's been cloudy for a couple of days, they won't be running. Uh, so that's another thing I wanted to show and push sustainable principles. A uh, great little tick, uh, trip, trick at home, fire prone areas. I always use like a rock mulch around the house. So it's non-combustible. Embers hit it, it doesn't burn and it looks really good. It allows water to percolate straight through after a, a summer rain, because you know, in a summer rain, you've got that uh, like 100 mil of mulch, you move the mulch away, and you've had an inch, where's the water? It's still dry. Where a rock mulch allows the water to percolate straight through, uh, and it gives good soil temperature. So we've got a north-facing aspect down here where I'm wanting to showcase amazing collection of Australian plants from WA, like in the Dandenongs, north-facing, rocky mulch, warmer temperature maybe during the day. So I'm trying to push boundaries with plant selection as well in this garden. Uh, my two little boys, I've ran out of building my garden around the corner, so I needed to find more land. And I found 15 acres of vineyard that was not used anymore. And over the last few years, we've pulled out those nine acres of vines and we're building a new garden. Uh, and we're hoping to talk with the Yarra Rangers about wonderful stormwater management we can do off Wandon Creek Road and create these wetlands that were once around our property. Uh, so this is what my first phase of what I've been building here, uh, this beautiful garden, playing and practicing a lot of plants for the garden down below uh, that we're building, uh, lovely prostrate uh, acacia baliana, um, and even like at that low point of, at the base of your retaining wall at home where it gets wet always, mimic nature. Mimic a dry creek. Select plants that are from Karanga that are perfect for that environment. And that's what I'm doing there. And it's spreading into this beautiful design. I've got this walk I've designed down below through these stepping stones where you're walking through these rushes called Me Baldina. It's this really sensory kind of experience. You're stepping through and it's just going to be a mass planting of 600 plants that we've been growing on over the last two years. Uh, Brachychitans, bottle trees, beautiful plant, great water efficient plant. Um, but even in London, I had big ones right down to the little baby juvenile ones. So it's, it's showing that life cycle. So yes, we've got big plants down there, but we also got juvenile little babies as well. Um, and celebrating how wonderful Australian plants are. And this is what I love about what we're doing down here too, is to diversify the old rhododendron gardens, which is now called the Dandenong Ranges Botanic Gardens, to celebrate Australian plants. We've got this amazing Karawara, three kilometres as the crow flies, as a wonderful 50 year old resource to look at. Um, but it's so exciting for this garden here to diverse its plant selection. So people aren't just coming here in spring, they're actually coming all year round because this garden is going to look really, really special all year round as well. 
Uh, and then I've got to put this in over the last uh, couple of years through a great program called Ribbons of Green. Uh, we have planted 7,000 plants on this property. Uh, we are, my goal is within 10 years, I want to plant over 10, 100,000 plants, uh, uh, which is super exciting. And I want to build all these wetlands and create this wonderful habitat for my favorite bird of all time is the white-faced gray heron that doesn't want to land in the old vineyard, oh, in the vineyard, but now it lands in the paddocks. So I want to create this wonderful habitat. Uh, we convert dams into lakes. Uh, seed grown grass tree, Xanthoria glauca, we've got them down below. Um, looking out to the Yarra Valley. Uh, plant palette, I love pushing boundaries. You can grow plants in gravel, you know that. You can sow seed in a, like a gravel and you can actually create rhodanthe. As long as you've got a bit of sun, um, you can create that effect. Stepping stones, um, uh, wonderful fire pit, uh, great conversation piece. Uh, and then how we translate that into an urban environment, into cities where uh, people want to connect with nature as well. Uh, and it's a great little thing. And that's a simple thing you can do at home. Uh, and I've talked before, like a little dish of water for your little wrens and things. Bees, bush bees, butterflies in those warm days, putting that out. Um, this is in Upway, a lovely garden, a really healing garden for this owner as well. And just the sound of water. So this is running off water collected off the roof. The tank overflows, it goes down a creek and goes into the billabong. The billabong overflows with good indigenous seed, goes back into our waterways. Best environmental practice in, a, in any environment. Veggie tubs, um, there's some, <laughs> some veggies here. Um, really great way of building things. Wicking garden beds, I love a wicking garden bed. I'm addicted to them. And so basically it's a chamber of water that you water um, and basically the water goes through to like a, a chamber at the base and then it capillary acts. It wicks up and then you might have to water for a couple of weeks. So it's a really good thing to build with your family. Um, this is a lovely garden I built um, before, of course, uh, in um, Parkdale where they don't use mains water. They're off the grid of water. Uh, and when their billabong here uh, drops down, the kids are realizing, oh, we've got to conserve how we're using our tank water. That's really cool. This is in Parkdale. So tank water, we know how precious it is. I'm on tank water. How we've got to conserve it? And what do we do with the overflow of that tank water? Can we slow that down, ca capture it, harness it, use it? Check this out. Before, it's about the size of a caravan, guys. Uh, and this uh, garden, the owner uh, did a Google for a landscaper and she wrote Johnson because her name's Maria Johnson. And I came up and she called my office and said, hey, Phil, how would you feel about designing a memorial garden for her husband, Harry, that had just passed away? So I arrived, she had blaring, like full, like the, the louder the volume was before, uh, Handel's water music, because that was his favorite piece of music. And she said, can you create this like water feature, billabong, that smells like this place we used to go to near the Grampians? So I want that smell. I want that smell to mimic nature. Uh, and we created this beautiful space, about the width of a caravan, running off water off the roof. Um, tank fills up, overflows into this. So this is this, this kind of message in everything we do. Uh, when I was going to Chelsea, I had to, Where's Fleming, who'd been going to Chelsea for many years, seven years, never got the top award or best in show. So pressure was on myself that last year to go there to try to get best in show for Australia. He put a cap on spending that year because he already put in over $2 million to Chelsea over that many years. So he said, you've got to go find money. So we had, I managed to raise money. Uh, we didn't have tax deduction, but unfortunately, like we do now, and uh, I managed to raise money and I also got the support from the Victorian government. Um, uh, Ted Ballew uh, put a major uh, contribution in. Uh, then he stepped down and I thought, no way, he's not going to be honouring his pledge. So we had a meeting. We've got to basically send everything back from, that's on the ship, back to Australia. And we, we didn't think we could do it. This lady, Maria, wrote a cheque and donated this amazing cheque to this project that allowed this project to happen and she wrote a letter and I had it in my little room, like there's about this big in Kensington, um, and I had it on there and she said, this garden has helped her heal beyond belief. And I, I still have goosebumps. She's such a beautiful lady, Maria. We've done the backyard as well. And we painted that caravan, the, the, the image of Chelsea as well. Uh, natural pools, uh, here we go. Natural pools, 
I can't believe in 2022, we are still swimming in chlorine. That's a challenge. I want Yarra Rangers Council to be the first council to actually create Australia's first natural chemical free swimming pool. Okay, let's do it. Because uh, you can watch this on iView on um, Dream Gardens last year. It's the, I think, Camwell Garden. Uh, little water hole. Uh, we've designed master planning for Federation Square from the Franklin inspiration of that waterfall. Actually, we can collect seven million litres off that roof. It's currently going straight to storm water. We could create Federation Falls going down to the Yarra River where we've got a floating, floating natural pool. Lilydale Lake, you could have a floating pool on there. My partners that we work with in Europe, they've designed and, and maintaining over 350 public pools around the world. Some 15,000 users per day. Work that maths out. That's it's significant. So um, it's possible we are behind. Um, I've put this in here to put a bit of uh, challenge. Uh, um, up in Port Douglas, the council there invited my team to come up with master planning. Uh, to create this public pool based on their kind of um, mimicking uh, the Litchfield and Mossman Gorge. Because uh, you can't swim up there because of crocodiles and, um, crocodiles and stingers. Um, and it's really windy. So we created this amazing mound that protected the wind, crocodile fence, uh, and, um, and harnessing all the water off the gymnasiums uh, and um, tennis courts. So there's that holistic approach. Think about what we can do with creating the best kind of... Uh, future for our children. Uh, a project just down the road, less than a kilometre, a harnessing driveway runoff into this dry creek that runs when it rains and makes its way down to this billabong and then to another dam. Uh, we have a ring main around that property for fire. So think of fire. It is a cycle in this, in this um, country and we have to respect it. Um, Several Estate Winery, really cool spot we did. And uh, I met my wife there, uh, which was super, super exciting. So it's really special. Uh, just to throw in a few other things I've been involved in, uh, giving back to the community. Uh, former Premier Ted Bally introduced me to these two remarkable ladies, Lynn Berry and Margaret Knight. Um, and they went on this campaign to um, uh, call the 5,000 Poppy Project, where people were knitting, crocheting poppies uh, and uh, in honour of our servicemen and women uh, to mark the centenary of the First World War. And uh, we, myself, and I've got a, a friend here who's helped uh, in this project. It was an amazing community project. The dream of these ladies was to take it to London. So Ted Bally said, you need to speak to Phil. So basically my company, I designed all these installations all around the world, uh, and we project managed and coordinated and implemented them. Uh, I had... Um, a veteran come up to me he, and he said, I've been suffering from post-traumatic stress for a very long time. Oh, I'm going to get emotional. And he said that this tribute was the most amount of gratitude and love he's ever, ever felt before. So really powerful things here. Uh, and then I used my creative design drive and not giving up to, to speak to the right people. And they said, 3,000 square metres, you can't take that. We don't have the space at Chelsea but we connected into the grounds of the Royal Hospital here. Uh, I had an amazing opportunity to meet Her Majesty. This is the second time. She said to me here, this is very different to what you did a few years ago when you won Best in Show. Um, and uh, she was really interested in what was happening next with this project. Uh, and what happened next, uh, we received another donation for this project to take it to Frumel where 5,500 Australians within 24 hours in 38 degree heat uh, got injured or, ki or, or killed. Um, so we took it there. Um, Brendan Nelson flew over to meet us and he said we need to design how we can mark the end of the First World War. And I have a wonderful volunteer uh, neighbour, um, hands up, he came and helped us implement uh, this project at the Australian War Memorial. Uh, and we had uh, 62,000 individual poppies made and an amazing team of network of volunteers massive healing journey for this. Path design, really similar to what I've designed down below. Um, the, 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 these were here for five weeks and naturalised and things germinated and I even got some oaks out of that that I dug up and planted in my garden at home. Um, and at the same time, we had the support from our former speaker, Tony Smith, been an incredible supporter of this project. 
uh, and I wanted to line the forecourt of Parliament House at the same time to remind our politicians every day what they decide and the decisions they make because this looks straight down to the Australian War Memorial. So how did I get to Chelsea? So 10, uh, 13 years ago, yeah, about 13 years ago, uh, I won Best in Show in, at the Melbourne Flower Show. Uh, there, Wes Fleming said, we've got to take this to London, but we've got to wait for Jamie, Jury, all these people to come for five years until um, you can have the opportunity. Uh, the year that I was there was the centenary year. So I'm be competing as a little horticulturist from the Yarra Valley against the best people in the world. Uh, I had to step out of my business for two years. I did not get paid for this. I had to self-fund my team to go there. Uh, this is kind of how my brain works. It's a bit like beautiful mind. Like, there's, like we had to think of everything. We had 17 days to build this. Uh, this is our site here to here. It's on a steep slope. It's really a, a challenging to build on a steep slope. I love it because I live on a steep slope. It's an opportunity, guys. It's an opportunity to think about it, especially with how water runs. We did a mock build in Scotland where we selected over 400 tonne of Scottish rock and we jigsawed it all together. I can still put this together in my, with my eyes closed. We surveyed every single rock. Each rock was connected to another rock, um, waterfalls, another waterfalls, and the main waterfall. We then dismantled it. It snowed the next day. T13 is bottom left-hand side of the waterfall on water level. So I had to mimic what I did here, what we've done down here in winter. Uh, great support. Um, you, uh, as a horticulturist, I had to then find all these amazing Australian plants with um, uh, Leanne from Flemings. We travelled all around Europe finding Australian plants that are grown over there. We didn't take any Australian plants over. It's all what was grown in Europe all around. Uh, Australian plants are more popular in Europe than in Australia. We've got to change this thought pattern, I believe. Um, thousand year old uh, um, olives, they move them by helicopter. Um, Grass Xanthria glauca, Brachychiton repestris, Queensland bottle trees we found in Sicily. Um, we didn't use these, these were just too expensive. Um, and amazing team of volunteers um, on this project. I'll just mark this person here is Tim. I met Tim through Yarra Rangers as a parent through the um, through parents group, not not mother's group, parents group, uh, and we've become best friends. He now works for my company, um, and he's a, a super person. Containers arrive, so we start building. We start excavating. This is day one. We're building a gorge there in a few minutes. Uh, a, a hundred ton crane arrives, it's exactly like what we did, had down here in the middle of winter in the bottom of our hole. Uh, our membranes, our waterproof membranes. It took close to five hours to place this first rock. It had to be within five mil, okay? And um, that took a long time. Um, and then tree ferns, I found this grower down in um, uh, Somerset or somewhere who's a world expert in penny rose growing. Um, and he also has a really cool um, collection of tree ferns out the back. And what they do in London, they prune them and they polish them and they vacuum them and they look really weird. <laughs> really weird. So I said, what we're going to do, we're going to put them all in all these weird, wacky angles over the next two years. You're not going to prune them again. We want the weird, wacky dead bits on there. Um, so we're mimicking them how they come out of the gorge. Flying tree ferns. And then amazing pieces of rock coming in. Because we had to build this making it look natural. That was my brief. Uh, and it had to be exactly that. 12 tonne rock coming in. Uh, and all of this is really similar to like what we've done here, but we scaled it up by 20 times. Uh, this amazing sculpture, we've got 300 waratahs in this garden that are all are about this high at the moment from a local um, protoflora grower. Uh, this sculpture was designed looking at the geometry of the waratah flower. And I thought, how can we get the queen to come to this garden? So I did a bit of research and I managed to work out the eye height of the queen. <laughs> and does anyone know what the eye height of Her Majesty is? That's a bit of a random one. What's that? About four and a half foot. Yeah, a little bit high. Depends on the shoes, actually. <laughs> so at five foot three, uh, if Her Majesty stood in the center, all these timber petals would completely disappear. So we've done the same thing here. Um, uh, 
the hydrology, yes, there was a lot of hydrology to make sure the waterfall sounded perfect. First Chelsea, 100 years before, they stopped our site. We said, we've got to, the BBC said, we've got to capture the exact location. You are building on the most historical part of Chelsea. I had Alan Titchmarsh come up to me afterwards and say, I'm just being so sick to death what's been happening on Main Avenue. They're doing all these minimal gardens. Where's this connection back to nature? And no one's using rock. So I've changed the momentum over there by now using rock and stone and walling and all of this. So first Chelsea, there's me. A uh, hundred years later, laser levels, a bit different. Um, so uh, we were worn out. We're working 17 hours a day. Uh, yes, and 17 days straight. Uh, two years of planning. Uh, it says out of order there. And then we had a request by good old Harry to come to this garden. And he said, call me Harry. He shook the hands of all the volunteers. I just love that. Uh, he said if there's a rope swing, he would have jumped into the billabong. Uh, and there's not many Aussies that have said, hey, mate, you're going to have to take your shoes off and you have purple explorers on. <laughs> uh, so he had a, uh, we had a, a, about a 10-minute conversation in the studio. He had conversations with the Queen that I heard about uh, later about the eye height. They thought it was hilarious. So she's informed on this garden as well, by the way. Uh, so from before, afterwards. We're using the exact sunset platform down below, making it grip resistant, of course, because we're in a public garden, um, where Harry and all these people, Graham Ross from Better Homes and Gardens, all these people are connected on. The studio that resides over the garden reminds me of Derek himself. You may not get him straight away, but when you do, you can't help but be impressed. It's bold, it's fascinating, and it's the central piece to the garden. I love the way the timber structures of the boardwalk and the sunset platform link the spaces together, making it so much more than just a watery hole in the ground. Then there's the water. So, can we hear anything? <laughs> this is a great story. You want to hear this story? So, what happened? Her Majesty walks up and um, she says, Philip, what's the story of these frogs I hear? And I said, one late night in my garden up in Olinda, uh, I was on my boardwalk recording the sounds of the frogs because that's the byproduct of creating a healthy ecosystem. Frogs come. And then she said, oh, you sound like a dear friend of mine, Sir David Attenborough. <laughs> so I'm thinking, this is going well. We were told, whatever you do, don't encourage the Queen to walk up into the garden. And you don't ever tell the Queen not to walk into the garden. So the lady here in charge said to your majesty, you're not allowed to walk into this garden. And the Queen turned around and said, you don't tell me what to do. I can't see this garden, I want to see this garden. And there, I had four and a half minutes having this amazing conversation with her. And this is the point of time, I know we've gone through a lot, we are still going through a lot, and throw COVID in the mix. Um, and this is the big drive, why I want to bring this garden back here for everyone. It's about how important it is to connect with nature. And I said to Your Majesty, Your Majesty, I have designed this landscape to connect humanity back to the beauty of nature of how, especially in our cities, in our urban environments, we are becoming so disconnected. We are really lucky where we are. Wes is, pretty happy too. Yeah, Wes is, Wes is very happy. So, uh, the next day is judging time, okay? Australia had never won best in show. You've got to win a gold to be eligible for best in show. Uh, and I'll let you sit, watch oh, this. Closer.
will get intense watching it. <laughs> So as you heard, it was a unanimous decision. Never in a hundred years had all the judges within a few minutes decided it was unanimous, best in show. So that was pretty cool. Normally it takes two days to decide. They came up to us afterwards and gave us feedback and they said, uh, Wes doesn't like hearing this by the way, um, really we're a bit over the Australian gardens because it was all about outdoor living and another natural, no, no, not natural pool, another lap pool and like this really, it was all about barbecues. Um, and where was the soul gone? Where's the soul gone? And this is something at home, guys, and what I'm doing down here, everything I try to create is to have the soul and beauty in it. Um, uh, this guy is that, <laughs> so that's that guy from Parents Group, Tim. Um, he got asked to do it four times, the devil. Uh, and the last time they came out and they said, excuse me, what's your name? And he said, oh, it's Philip Johnson. <laughs> so then there's report, report that Phil's jumped in with his clothes off um, with the Queen viewing uh, crazy. So we had to dismantle that. Uh, but I came back, as I told you, it was pretty hard, to say the least. And I, I just did not want to give up to make this a public art. I was getting phone calls over there. I met with the government, all these key people. They said, yep, we want to have it as a public garden, uh, but who's going to fund it? We're going to have a public garden. Who's going to maintain it? I've had to sign a contract that I will cover at my expense down here for 10 years. I want to set up a friends group, we need to find funding, but to make this garden happen here would not have happened if I didn't say that. And I had to sign the contracts at the exact same time when we signed the construction contract. So for the last four and a half years, I have not given up. We've had amazing support from our local MP, James Molino. Uh, he came and visited the other day um, to the site and he said in his 20 years uh, as a politician, this is his absolute highlight, this project. It is so exciting. Um, so this is our site. It's an old golf course. It's kind of cool. It's been altered, manipulated significantly. Let's, let's repair the land. And um, it will have all the elements of the original garden, 20 times the size. It's, DDA compliant, so it's accessible to everyone. So my mum, who's just got out of hospital two days ago, she can walk it on a walker. Yes, she's got to get down there. That's something that's happening with the master planning here, um, not to do with us. But our whole garden's accessible. You can prams everything. Um, the, the, the interpretive is actually can go into any language through QR codes. You can hear stories of like little snippets of like, like the Queen meeting. Um, there's information on all the rare collection of plants that we're setting up as well. So really been cutting edge in that interpretive as well. Um, it's going to flick through. Uh, so we're, we're building just down below here, as you kind of saw from that video at the start. Uh, and it connects into the existing garden with this beautiful curved ramp off the grid on power. We even um, had discussions early on with the CFA. This is accessible for Elvis. 
Um, it's actually got an automatic fire system over the whole thing. It's a million litres of water. Um, uh, there's a lot of educational elements that are going to be going into this garden to communicate that message to schools, groups, university groups, TAFE, and people that just love gardens, or people that might not even be into gardens to try to inspire them to. Uh, we are building against the slope. So this is the natural gradient. Okay, we've got a major excavation because what I'm working over a 20 meter level change over an acre and a half and I had to make it accessible for wheelchairs so it's been really challenging to work. It's absolutely been so hard. We've had to work all around the existing trees. We've had to um, do uh, air pruning where we're digging close to a tree with supervision with our arborist to make sure there's no major root there. If there was a major root there, we would have to rethink it. That's what we've done with the air pruning. It's quite amazing. You're blowing the soil and you're finding the root, making sure there's no large roots. Every single thing had to be documented and photographed. So I designed everything around the existing beautiful mountain ash and blackwoods, um, all these things as well. Uh, enormous amount of plants, over 400 different species uh, to kind of celebrate people, how wonderful the plants from our country are. Uh, interesting grafted things as well. Uh, it's going to be very overwhelming down there, of immersed in beauty. <laughs> and uh, lots of aquatic plants, water plants as well. Uh, we've potted up all these plants over the last couple of years uh, uh, in Wandon, where we're growing on bigger and bigger. Because no one's ever done this with Australian plants, growing plants bigger and bigger. They normally just buy at a karanga at a six inch pot. So we've been growing them on. There are baronias there, there's bush food, there's a whole range of bush, uh, bush food as well. Uh, and then we started construction a few, a um, couple of months ago. So it's, as you know, I, I really wanted to build in summer. Um, you know, when you build up here, you don't want to build in summer. Uh, unfortunately, I couldn't, had no control. So I've now faced the build in the hardest conditions in the wettest goddamn winter. And thank God it's not raining today. Uh, I love this. That's a, good, that's a good sod turn, isn't it? It's, it's not a new shovel. Everyone's getting into it and getting, <laughs> getting, getting active. A uh, little collection of plants that I just put together to show the combination. We've got 15,000 plants but a lot are combinations of three plants together, so it's probably about 10,000 plants going into the garden as well. This, this is behind the scenes. So I've had to make it look like what we originally did with the rock. So I've been selecting all this rock around the country, around Victoria. And then I made a, a, just a schematic model of what these rocks will come together because we've got all these deliveries and I'm, I apologise if we, you were behind anything in this, a rock or two. Um, and uh, we had to bring all this together to make it look like it was natural, but it had to be a south facing aspect so I can actually grow tree ferns in it. So I'm working against the contour. Um, this is a, the, the base of the waterfall. So, so meticulous a level of detail what went into this. This is this beautiful stone wall. This stone wall came from a cattle yard that they've just put in a metal cattle yard and they had to get rid of the wall. So we put it into this garden. Isn't that a work of art? Habitat too, great habitat. Lichen's a wonderful air quality indicator. And then this is the accessible path from up the top here that will make its way down uh, into, the, into the garden. And you've got these wonderful vistas looking across to the Yarra Valley. That sculpture will be uh, up in here. Uh, so the Queen sculpture will be up in there. Uh, and uh, that's how it was looking uh, a couple of days ago as well, just after the rain stopped and it, it opened up. Yeah. I'm just about to show you that. No, that's perfect. So what is quite amazing, um, for this project, we've worked really closely with Yarra Ranges um, Storm Re Recovery Project. So the whole garden is going to be mulched from 
the, 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 the composted and mulched trees as well. So through the whole landscape, there's over 20 seats that have been beautifully milled up around the whole garden of those whopping great eucalyptus regnum trees. Um, even we've got even these beautiful like hand rails, so for elderly to be able to push up on on these seat on these log seats as well. Uh, I just have to say it's been an absolute pleasure to talk, share my vision uh, for my local family up here. Um, uh, something I was really quite blown away with hearing, uh, having a meeting with Yarra Rangers yesterday, and I, I just said, I want to help in some way. So what I've said uh, is that I would love to offer a design. One of my designs might be a small little bit of garden, might be a large property. Um, it's valued at over $10,000 of design service but to someone in the community. So someone that w the Yarra Rangers, they will be in contact to communicate how people could enter, but it might be someone you might know. Uh, it can be completely private, but I would love to be able to help someone. Get inspired. Um, Yarra Rangers can provide mulch, plants from Indigenous nurseries. So it's, it's a really, and I'm gonna get on to Karanga too. I think that's really important. And, and maybe Karawara Gardens, you know them well. <laughs> um, so uh, really exciting. Uh, I can't wait to show you our garden down there. If anyone wants to help volunteer with plant, planting, we need really good planters that can work in any condition that are really able. Contact my, web, my, my, my website and um, put your details down. But uh, I can't wait for you to see the kookaburras in our garden down there. Thank you. <laughs>